The Bluefield Solar Income Fund is 10 years old and it's just published fully earnings which show another year of increased underlying earnings. These are record numbers it's come through with this time around and they're good dividends as well. I have to say before we get underway with our guest, I am a shareholder in this fund. Uh, James Armstrong is managing partner at Bluefield Partners and investment advisor of the Bluefield Solar Income Fund. Welcome back to the studio. Good to see you, as I said, I just have to uh, get that out of the way because all the questions I ask might be taken as being loaded in that direction. But I'm going to criticise some of the what's going on uh, in with Bluefield uh, in just a moment. But I do want to begin with these record numbers and what's been generating the the increase in earnings. Well, I think it's a, it's a culmination, Jeremy, of, of 10 years work where we've created an incredibly strong platform for the business. So we have a very defensive debt structure. Um, we have an incredibly effective power strategy. Um, we've got 114 people looking after this fund alone who are looking at various different aspects of the value creation and value protection of the assets that we manage. And you put those things together and it's created... Um, record earnings, as you say. So we've delivered, we've got two times um, dividend cover, um, so record dividend, highest ever dividend. And you put it all together, and it's the fact that we've had, got a very, very protective, defensive um, capital structure, which means that we're benefiting from higher power prices. We're benefiting from inflation because we have, a, the majority of our revenues are di directly linked to RPI. So altogether, it's just been a very, very good um, earnings period for us. For those that don't know about the fund, explain more about where the earnings come from, because you're not just solar, are you? You're battery storage as well. Uh, and you have, over the years, accumulated some really good assets, haven't you, which pay unusually high yields because you bought into them at a point when there was a benefit to do so. Yeah, we're, we're one of the highest, on a pence per share basis, one of the highest dividend payers uh, in the infrastructure sector, not just the renewable sector. Yeah, so the, the, there's very, very high quality defensive revenue. So you have a base which is uh, rock revenues. Now, actually, I should just clarify, the majority of our assets uh, are well, overwhelmingly our solar assets, mm -hmm. which are the most defensive, predictable of those, um, of those types of assets. And you have regulated revenues, which are RPI linked, called rock revenues. And they run out for the next 12, 13 years, RPI linked. And then we also can sell electricity to the wholesale market, of which we have a very effective power strategy. And so we've delivered very, those things combined means that the pressures that a lot of funds have faced in the short term, which is pressures of inflation, uh, pressures with higher power prices, we benefit from those. They're our friend. Uh, and because we have a capital structure where we've got mostly almost all fixed costs, so we've got fixed debt, amortising debt, that means that we benefit overwhelmingly from higher inflation and higher power prices. And that's driven the record earnings that you've seen in these recent results. Are, there, are these record earnings repeated in other companies that you compete against in the market? Or are you, is your USP that you're better off than a lot of the others in the sector? How, how do you compete? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll talk about Bluefield. Sure. Uh, in terms of we have, where we have a sort of a unique position is, first of all, the, 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 the I mentioned it earlier, the capital structure is very key. Um, having fixed amortising debt is pretty boring. It's a pretty boring statement. I've spoken to you about this before over the years. Mm. No one really talks about it when interest rates are low. Yeah. Um, people are really focused on it now. So of our of our 460 million of debt we've got in the company, which is X, the short-term credit facilities, so there's long-term debt, 430 is fixed amortising. People are really focused on that now because we've had no interest rate risk mm -hmm. um, during this period. Um, so that's a real, that just structurally, you can't sort of, you can't, you know, sort of invent. In my opening comments, uh, one of the things that's really key is that um, a lot of the elements which have come together to produce these earnings that you've just seen are have been put in place up to 10 years ago they can't they can't suddenly be put in you know put, put into the into the business um, and it means that also structurally we're going to have the benefit of those in future years so you you have a kind of a, a nice sort of confluence of factors which is which is going to drive earnings going forward so in short yes our earnings in terms of when you look at earnings levels dividend cover dividend paid yes we are um, the highest um, of our kind in the sector. And there is a material difference between our earnings 
and dividend cover and others in our sector. Mm, okay. Um, you, you mentioned the, the debt. Uh, you mentioned the short-term credit facility as mm. well, which I believe has been expanded. It's about 130, 150 million, I think, you now got available, haven't you? What are you going to use that for? Is there an opportunity, do you think, out there to expand? Are you looking uh, to expand at the moment? I think it's a, I mean, I think it's a time to be very, very cautious mm -hmm. about um, where we are in a cycle at the moment with inflated interest rates, um, and inflated debt costs. I think one has to be very careful in terms of what next move is. I think it's great that we have some headroom. I think it is something which, um, should there be um, a very exceptional opportunity, and I think the bar has to be very high if you're looking at acquisitions. Um, I think that it is great that we've got that flexibility at the moment whilst the equity markets are shut because, you know, as with everyone in our sector at the moment, our share price is below our net asset value. So, yes, it mm -hmm. gives us some flexibility. But I think we all we would say, yes, it's great to have that um, ability if there was the right opportunity, but we will be very cautious at the moment in terms of looking at future acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Power prices have been declining, um, some of the headlines we've seen recently, which have been great for people who have suffered enormously high. How does that affect uh, the business model at Bluefield? Is that good or negative? I'm not quite sure how that would play out. So it affects the element, obviously, where we're selling power into the future. We have a particular strategy, which is that we fix, um, we have a capital structure which enables us to be able to go into the market and fix at the short end, the most liquid end of the power market. So it's that kind of six to 30 month period. Why that's key for shareholders? If you think about the Bluefield Solar Income Fund, in essence, is about giving defensive, progressive yield to investors, of which we've been very successful over the last 10 years. So part of that strategy is to create visibility over the revenues. And that's where, why we look. We don't want to float the, uh, that element of the electricity sales. What we want to do is to fix out the contract. So what we've done very successfully, and it's being shown in these results and will be shown in future results, is because we've fixed in contracts at much higher prices, the prices that you were seeing uh, in the last of 12 to 18 months, they're coming through now, will continue to come through in the future. So we have a very good level of visibility and also very high earnings for future mm. periods. Mm. Um, I said at the top, I wanted to um, pull up a couple of points that I felt were, were worth mentioning um, from a critical point of view. And that is, you mentioned the net asset value, it's share price is below NAV, isn't it? I think we look at the share price chart. Uh, this goes back to, well, we're going back to 2019. Um, 117 pence. This, this drop recently, no, I, I accept you have no control over the share price. Um, a couple of things I always ask. First of all, what's it pricing in? You talk about the guaranteed earnings over the next decade mm -hmm. or so. I mean, you've got here a share price which is depressed from recent highs. Um, what's going on and why have you got a net asset value below or the share price below net asset value? What's going on that we should perhaps maybe know about that's delivering this sort of result? So the, the trigger for this is something that's been seen, seen across the renewable space and also infrastructure more broadly. So mm -hmm. you, could, you could throw it, show a chart of every single FTSE 250. Yeah, absolutely. In judgment, yeah. And, and it's the same, and, it, and it's the same story. Although we are not this um, great thing to think about, I think we're the, the highest rated um, of our peers. Um, what this is a response to is the rise in guilt rates and also um, interest rates. So. You know, suddenly asset, uh, you know, there are different assets which are giving yield. And so if you think about our sector being predominantly a yield based marketplace, it's affected sentiment. So you've got money moving out of the sector um, because they're looking at uh, different uh, yielding uh, assets, particularly short term gilts is one mm -hmm. of the areas. And um, we think there's a I think when you're talking at Bluefield Solar and also more widely the sector, there is it, it's a bit of an overreaction what you're seeing, when you think about the quality of the alternative income that you can get with something like Bluefield Solar, when you think about the fact that we're still delivering a NAV of 100, circa 140 pence per share, so we're significantly below where the share price is today. So the share price is giving a, um, about a 7.3, 7 7.4% 7 um, uh, yield today, which is very attractive when you think about the quality of the earnings we've got. Um, what that is, and you think that actually the discount rates that have all been increased, the discount rate in our fund has gone from 6.75% to 8%. So for a long-term infrastructure, mm. that's very, very attractive. Um, it, 
it feels like there's a sort of so the baby's been thrown out with the bathwater in terms of the way the market has responded to suddenly these high guilt rates. I mean, and I, I have to say, one totally understands that around the time of the mini budget, it was such a shock to the system yeah. that obviously there was a big, you know, you had fairly precipitous drops. Then the share prices started to kind of go up slightly. And then again, it's dropped down. It's being driven very largely by the, where people are viewing, obviously, the risk free rates. So, what are guilt rates doing? Our view would be if you look at long term, if you think about the fact that you've got, say, we would measure off the 15 year gilt, which is roughly, let's say, crudely, sort of four and a half percent. The discount rate we're giving is 8%. That's a material, material premium to the risk free rate. Yep. So, you know, I think when you look at it in terms of those fundamental areas, we think that over time there should be a re rating. And we also think that what will probably happen is the the high quality funds and and we would put Bluefield Solar into that in terms of obviously the performance that we've delivered over a decade, um, there will be a re-rating. But it's obviously it's very disappointing for shareholders at the moment who are working very hard to be able to look to get that sort of movement and that re-rating moving upwards as soon as we can. So the answer to that in a word is lower guilt rates. You want to see rates come down in order to show the benefit that you're producing. Yeah, I mean, lower guilt rates are going to, I think you've got to see, I think there's two elements. I think you have to look at the, um, what is viewed as a top to the interest rate cycle. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, affecting sentiment. I think uh, certainly stability in the guilt rates. I mean, you know, I, I think it's, yeah. uh, you know, where the guilt rates will go. I think we need to see some, some element of stabi yeah. stability. And then, then you can look at, uh, as an investor, you can say guilt rates are stable. And then you can look at that risk premium. Yeah. And, and then you can, you know, our view would be something like Bluefield Solar looks very, very attractive in that. So I think it's more about sort of stability and seeing a top in those markets. I have to say, I, I talked to a lot of AIM companies and they're all saying the same thing. I mean, it's exactly this. You get quality companies, a tremendous value being created for yeah. those that are prepared to fish at the bottom. Yeah. If they're prepared to stick their neck out and go for a bottom. So anyway, that's another story. Um, just wanted to quickly catch up with you one final area, um, where we go from here. Um, share price aside and what you want to see in order to try and encourage people to understand more about the mechanics of the business and how it creates value for, for investors. What are you doing in the next six, eight, 10, 12 months uh, that's going to push the company forward? Well, I think it's going to be, you know, it's more of the same. I think we've got this platform that I mentioned in my opening comments where we've got a tremendously solid business which has great characteristics to say a very defensive uh, capital structure, very, very effective uh, maximization of revenues. And we also have a, a very large proprietary pipeline mm -hmm. of deals because sort of the DNA of Bluefield has always been to build out and how we've created so much value for shareholders historically has been in that primary market. So looking at creating new solar, particularly solar capacity. So, you know, the next 12 months is one where I say we, we, we are very conscious of it's a time to be cautious about um, what we do with cash. We've got, we've got, you know, we're in a great position, Joe. We've got record earnings. We've got, um, we've got also significant amounts of surplus earnings, which are sitting in the business, which um, we could look to reinvest or indeed, you know, look at different uses for. So there's, there's a really, it's a very solid platform. And I think, you know, what we would look to do is continue the same on the same trajectory you know it's delivered the best performing fund of its kind mm. um it it will it has all the hallmarks all the ability to be able to continue to deliver that high performance and so you know what we would look to is whilst being very uh cognizant of you know sort of debt costs being very and being very cautious i think it's got to be more of the same yeah sorry one other question i did have to ask and this is something yeah. back in my mind um and that is the small change of tack from the government on things that are going to take us to carbon zero. Um, there has been a tweak there. We all know and recognise the fact that the government's getting involved now and the previous targets we'd had. Does that change anything for Bluefield? No, in, in, for the generators, what Sunak said when he announced the changes to uh, around net zero targets, which were centred really around the, the extension of the, um, the ban on uh, cars, so diesel cars, yeah. and then obviously um, gas heaters. Yeah. At the footnote to that, which got all the, t the attention, I mean, and it isn't good, that, just those sort of comments, they worry people because of sentiment. Yeah. But if you actually get to the footnote of that, he spoke about the two areas which are incredibly important to Bluefield Solar and very beneficial. So he said, you've got to look at speeding up planning 
the new build solar and obviously you're talking about offshore wind um, and you've also um, got a way of trying to unlock the grid which is the great um, is the real area where you've got the kind of the handbrake in getting new um, low carbon assets onto the onto the onto the system so in fact it was an incredibly positive statement for someone like Blue Persona, but of course, yeah. the what was picked up was the was yeah. the initial changes they spoke yeah. about. Looks pleasure. Thanks indeed for joining us. It's great to have you back in the studio, James. It's James Armstrong. He's managing partner at Bluefield Partners, an investment advisor of the Bluefield Solar Income Fund. <laughs>